Okay, um, so here I am, and again, every evening, I feel more and more every night like this is a TV show, it's really funny. Um, but tonight is the night of Camelot, um, and I'm here with Alison Hargreaves, who is the writer, director, creator, brain behind this really unusual project. Um, and we always have these conversations and assume that people have seen the film so that we don't have to worry about spoilers and stuff. So don't, you know, if you, have, if you haven't seen it, um, please just uh, watch this tomorrow and go and watch it. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll recap everyone for everyone's benefit. Um, Camelot is um, a documentary about a group of um, young boys who live in a village um, in the Rimley Valley in Wales. And they are putting on, with Alison and her team's assistance, a very ambitious production of Camelot, the myth, um, as in King Arthur, um, devised by themselves using references from their own lives. So their granny pops up and Stormzy pops up and so on. Um, and um, it is Alison's brainchild. So I think it makes sense just to kick off at the beginning of the story, which predates the Uncertain Kingdom completely, you know, by a long way. How did, how did it come together? How did you come up with this idea? Um actually it was it was in response to a call out um uh, for a, another um another pitching opportunity that i sort of really hastily scrabbled together an idea for that was kind of half baked mm -hmm. um and it was a a call out for ideas um for um some film that would be a portrait of britain and the idea that i came up with in response to the call out was um, this sort of uh, reinvention of a myth by children. So a sort of re reinvention of a story that we feel is knitted into our identity as a country um, and sort of underpins our culture. But to have children um, give them the freedom to completely rewrite it according to what makes sense to them at the time so that it would produce something very a fresh portrait and actually would enable us to step inside the imaginations of children and actually see things oddly from their perspective um, in a way that actually is much harder you know in other ways of sort of engaging them in conversation you can actually mm -hmm you can learn a lot when you when you empower people to sort of use their imaginations so that was the idea and then i was looking for a it was always camelot in south wales because i knew that there was a connection between that part of the world and that myth and also that there was this these themes of sort of the masculine hero and the recent history of south wales with these um sort of post-industrial situation where the men of the valleys had had to sort of reassess their identities um, or were left slightly in limbo between what they used to you know what they used to stand for how they used to sort of um, measure their own value mm. moving really sort of dizzily into the current age where the world has changed and the valleys have changed and there's a sort of national conversation about masculinity toxic masculinity and um and it felt like all of those themes of destiny and the future and um discovering yourself and self-determination were in that myth but also really important things to explore today mm. um, so yeah it sort of snowballed from then and then the, when the uncertain kingdom um appeared it felt like a really good fit yeah. because it was always supposed to be um it, it was always supposed to be um theater as a vehicle for children's imaginations and also i wanted to always draw that um kind of to draw that connection between their imaginary worlds and their real world so that I was showing how the two sort of flowed into one another mm. um, and where they were getting their ideas from. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the access to that community? Because 
it's so clear from the film how powerfully the idea and I and I think must be also you were embraced by that community because there's so much trust when the boys are talking to you you're in their homes you're talking to their parents and their families how did that come about how did you pick the school how did you know how did you pitch it to them and say like this is a thing to spend your time on yeah um well it was a sort of chain of introductions getting to the school i spoke to i'd worked on another project um in the Ebervale, um which had been supported by one of the kind of um creative organizations uh, that is based near the Romney Valley it's based in Blackwood and uh, I spoke to them and there was a chain of introductions to the local authority and then through them to the parents network and through them to the school and it was just a lot of conversations and actually I think because I always wanted it I never I never sort of approached it um, sort of foregrounding the ambition for the film. What I wanted was to have a, a kind of sincere collaboration with those children and with those schools. Cause I, you know, um, it, I knew that actually the film would only work if that collaboration was a real thing. And if they did feel genuinely empowered to write their own story and they did really own that story and they did really see mm that it made sense to them. And it was kind of the, the opportunity, you know, sadly, um, the state school system has kind of pulled all the kind of constructive creative activities out of the core of the curriculum. So, mm -hmm. in a, you know, in majority, vast majority of schools, and I think all of state schools, it's by no means, um, is by no means certain that children in primary school will do any kind of constructive creative activity where they might be engaging with sort of um, professionals or with practitioners mm -hmm. um, and might have an insight into the industries. Um, and so actually it was a massive novelty, you know, to come to them, say we're gonna bring a professional theatre team yeah. to come these children are going to lead the process they're going to work with designers they're going to work with writers directors stage managers production managers they're going to design the set they're going to come up with the costumes the script the you know the characters the staging they're going to be guided and supported by the adults but actually we're at their service mm. um and you know it's something for the community everyone wants to see everyone wants a show yeah um and also everyone really responded to the idea of role modeling and about masculinity and about um the importance of enabling these boys to think about where they wanted to go and what their mm. values were and yeah to to just pause for a moment and have a kind of have a a sort of conversation in a safe space yeah. about their ideas for the you know about who they were and where they wanted to go because the yeah. normal school day doesn't always you know a sort of um doesn't provide a space for that kind of conversation yeah i mean that doesn't always i would say rarely you yeah. know yeah. unless unless when facing down an exam you know which is a yeah. very clear turning point yeah it's right. an extraordinary thing for the kids to get to right. do and i think um, it was yeah so i just think it was generally sort of a very rare you know, it's, 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 it was a novelty and it was, you know, it was a free, it was a freebie and it was yeah. a lovely thing for, you know, for them to be involved in within school hours. And yeah. I was keen to make it as, um, it had to be worth their while. They had to yeah. gain something from it. I didn't want to, you know, it had to be, it, you know, the, the sort of, the heart of the film would have to be in their investment in the, yeah. in the project itself. And if they weren't invested because I'd been, you know, maybe um, I'd been too heavy handed or I'd been, um, I'd sort of approached it in the wrong way, then I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have got the film. So in a way I had to sort of let the, let the project and the opportunity lead. Yeah lead the way really and um, see 
yeah. Right. Would you mind giving us a bit of an insight into, I mean, partly just because I'm very curious about this, the funding, because there was, you know, the funding for this project, there was the funding for the film, which obviously, you know, came from us. And, but that was such a small part of it because we were specifically funding the film of right. the thing. Right. And in the meantime, you're also funding this enormous project. Yeah. And it really felt from the off, you know, when we, when we met you, um, that this was the thing that was going to happen. And it, you know, come hell or high water, this project was getting made. And I wonder if you could speak to those challenges and, and where you got that money from and, and the, the, yeah, sure. the bumps that you hit. Um, yeah, well, um, my background is in theatre as much as film. In fact, slightly more sort of weighted on the theatre side. So I was, in, in a way, much more familiar fundraising for theatre than, um, than film. Um, and there was, at that time, a strand of funding called Creative Collaborations through Arts Council Wales, um, which was all about um, schools working in tandem with creative practitioners, professional industry mm. practitioners, to provide something which would be an extension of genuine enhancement to the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be ordinarily part of the curriculum, was an absolute sort of bonus add-on. Yeah. And um, that had to be um, an application from the school and from the, the, their sort of artistic collaborator. Yeah. And that was, how much was that? That was 15 grand. And then we also, I have to say, we, I had spoken to the, even before the Arts Council, because I'd gone through my chain of introductions through the, through the local authority and the um, area regeneration team in Rumney that was so sort of really looking for projects that would engage boys in particular. They had a few schemes for girls recently and they, were, mm -hmm. they weren't quite sure what to do with the boys. Um, and thankfully, and it was so valuable that they were the first people to say, we'll give you five grand. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like the first domino falls yeah. and then you can go to everyone else and say, this person's invested this and it's happening and people are, you know, seeing its value and that made everything much easier. And yeah. the Arts Council, of course, then were sort of much more prepared to give to something that someone else has invested in. Yeah, yeah. And so the, yeah, so the sort of theatre layer Mm. And the community engagement project was Arts Council and was local authority. Yeah. 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 But a... I mean, in terms of hurdles, um, I would say the only thing really is cash flow for the project, just because all of that bureaucracy around drawing down money, not only from the Arts Council, but through the school. Yeah. At, to us and then going through. And also because it was such a novel project, no one had worked in that way before. Yeah. So no one quite understood, you know, the, the school certainly hadn't sort of, um, uh, hadn't really operated in that way before and the local authority hadn't operated in that way before. So even though, yes, it was great that it was a novel project, it was yeah. really apparent from the start that everyone was completely unfamiliar with the process. Yeah. Um, and it was really about, you sort of really had to tug everyone and everything into place you know yeah. like nothing happened automatically yeah um, with the best of intentions and with a lot of enthusiasm behind it it was uh you know i had to sort of really um sort of move everyone along <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well i mean you're dealing with people who are exceptionally busy already right you know right. teachers are so strung out there's right. no you know and then you're like oh let you know let's do this play and it right. is so on top of everything else um, but it's a huge testament to your ambition that that it came that it came together because it was so much bigger than the film and in that way it was so different to I mean really everything else that we pit that we um, commissioned because you know the docs were let's go and observe this thing that's happening or let's go and interview people about these things yeah. that they feel um, which is all perfectly valid and and those those films are successful but yours was this weird hybrid where it was like. I'm making a documentary about a thing that I'm causing to happen. So right. it's not, you know, it's, you're not passive. You're, you're at, you're on every side right. of it. Um, yeah. But on that, let's talk a bit about your collaborators, because obviously you didn't do this alone. Um, no, no. Who are these people? Who's in the team? 
So on the theatre side, I worked with a theatre director called Justin Cliff, who's based in Newport. Um, and he, you know, is a sort of experienced advisor, experienced working with children based in Wales, felt really important that it was a, was, you know, a, a sort of a man with Welsh connections who's in South Wales, understood um, the context. And then we had um, Adam Peck, who's a really experienced divisor, dramaturg, um, writer for theatre. Um, and we had a production manager called Mark Monday, who um, tours sort of West End productions um, and has actually worked with Bristol Old Vic um, on a project I think I was I was connected to once in a while but a sort of chain of recommendations again mm. um, and then we had Peter Harrison on lights who's based at the Old Vic in London um, who is yeah I, you know was just a, um, a wonder um, we had Sam Halmarak, who was a musical director for the production, the show, but also for the film, yeah. a composer for the film. Um, we had Alid Williams on costume. We had Charlie Brookman, stage manager. We had... Um, we had... Tin Shed, I think his company's called Tin Shed. It's Russell, Russell on set design. Um, I mean, this theme collaboration is with the boys. Huge. Yeah. yeah. What was that like for the boys? I mean, how, when you show up with an army like that, how did they respond and take charge of you all? Well, they, well, um, we sort of, um, we did a lot of learning along the way once we met the boys and, you know, established a kind of, I mean, if we ever did establish a kind of method with them, but um, we had sort of set design days and music days and story days. And, you know, so yeah. we would focus them on one of the disciplines at a time, more yeah. usually or one or two. Yeah. Um, and then the writer would be, once we'd sort of familiarised the boys with ourselves, um, the sort of myself and Justin really, oh, Holly Bond as well as associate producer, mm. um, familiarised the boys with us and with the idea and with the sort of the objective. Yeah. Um, we brought them in to focus the boys on, um, on whatever the discipline was that we wanted to develop. And then... And Adam, while we played sort of games with the boys and sort of imaginative exercises um, and storytelling exercises, Adam um, Peck was sort of harvesting ideas from, right. and we were harvesting drawings and then coming back into the room with something that had been kind of framed for them. Yeah, And then there was a really sort of remarkable moment where we first sort of um, brought back a written script for them. Right. From, uh, you know, sort of stitched together from the ideas we've been working with from with them. And they all sat down in a circle and took it so seriously that it was like the most amazing moment because it meant that like they cared and they completely took ownership of it and they knew that it was theirs. Yeah. Because they would never have shown, you know, you know that much respect if they hadn't yeah um and that was when i knew it was going to work because they it was them you know yeah. and they they were really they were invested yeah um and then it was just frantic as theater always is you never have enough time um we ran the show from start to finish once and that was the show <laughs> um and we uh yeah, I mean, they're amazing. Up until like a couple of days before, I mean, some of them were just, I have to say, those boys were so like, the, just like, kind of volcanoes of surprising, adapt, like, talents and abilities. And some of them were off book in like, no time at all. Some of them were composing uh, music for the entire show and then coming back for the technical rehearsal with a remix. All of the ideas just never stopped coming. And they'd never done a single day's drama in their lives. Like, 
a single day it's innate you know mm. and uh and their work, you know, it's all sorts of challenges involved in working with eight-year-old boys, of course. Yeah. But, the, you know, they're sort of, they're fast thinkers, they're funny, they were invested, they were disruptive and difficult at times, but um, they were just so capable that yeah. you'd have thought, you know, you'd have thought they'd done it before. I mean, you totally did. I mean, seeing that, Izzy got to go to the show and I, you know, yeah. um, another, I should say the other, the other producer of the Uncertain Kingdom went to the show and I was so jealous because mm-hmm. when I saw it, I was just like, oh, what an experience to see them. And the little, the little yeah. MC um, on them. I mean, yeah. are you kidding? Yeah. I, I yeah. just, I couldn't cope. It was just so amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I mean, but this is the film. Honest. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, but to be honest, the show in itself is, is a wonderful thing. But the film was obviously, I was trying to do something else. Mm. Um, but the film is, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do agree that the show was something special. And I think that the, the film of the show, which we also have an edit, which is just start to finish of the show. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's something I'm very proud of as well, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah. as you but, should be. The film was always about trying to tie, trying to find a hinge because the ideas in the show had come out of their lives. And so this kind of central relationship of Arthur and Merlin and Arthur and Finn and his granddad. And that was the hinge, you know, that Mm. Finn was a frog hunter. They had come up with the idea that Arthur was a frog hunter, that Merlin had sort of empowered Arthur to achieve something he didn't know he could achieve and then you have Finn and his granddad who kind of provides the sort of social context for the moment in time that Finn's growing up Mm. but also is that kind of representative of Merlin in Finn's life and someone Mm. who is by his side you know um and it was when it was the frogs thank god for the frogs because that was the sort of the the hinge Mm. between the the world on stage and the real world yeah um could you talk a little bit about your kind of creative choices for the film um I'm particularly interested in your camera choices because it was so noticeable to me that the camera was so passive and so often just static Mm. and there's all of this going on with the boys because they've just you know they're little balls of energy um how did how did you how did you come to that decision um I think it was always I never had any other like um, instinct about that. I I um, I wanted it to be I wanted it to be led by a voiceover from the boys. I wanted it to be them leading the story, and mm. I wanted us to be inside their thoughts and in conversation with them and sort of listening to their internal monologues and listening, you know, sort of with the voices. Mm. And I wanted space around that. I knew that I was sort of, I I wanted to give people space to think. And also I think by doing as little as possible with the camera, you get to see as much as possible of the boys because Mm. you're not in conflict with their own energy. Mm. You're just letting them kind of, you know, um, be the be the only thing that draws the eye. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're not really thinking about the direction. You're not thinking about um, the sort of uh, the agenda of the filmmaker, or maybe maybe, or at least not too sort of heavily. Um, I knew that it was that kind of landscape too. Actually, it's that kind of place mm. that it's. Uh, these sort of enormous skies and this sort of sense of kind of peace and it felt like if I wanted to give space around the the voices that I just wanted people to sort of have something maybe a bit more contemplative Mm. to look at even though I think I wanted I wanted sort of a I like to think that they're quite sort of um, 
that they're engaging because they find the landscape very striking mm. um and of course the boys you know you can watch kids and people have said you know it's nice just watching kids be kids yeah um and there's just something very watchable i think about children who are completely um and thank goodness they were completely um unbothered and completely yeah. you know there were absolutely no there was no performance yeah really even if they were performing it was you couldn't help but sort of um you'd never be there's no deception with kids yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. even yeah their performances reveal who they are as well even when they're hamming it up and you know they're right. being precocious or right. whatever it's all the same but there right. is that one moving shot that so much i mean it made our trailer where the kids are on their scooters and their bikes right. and it, it's right. such a great decision because it's so spielberg and it <laughs> just makes them epic like they're they're tiny little people and their mm. and their lives and it just and them talking about destiny is so it's just so great there's not even a question mm. in that that's just me saying congratulations oh, I just okay. think it's great. Well, that was always one i wanted to do that like i did want i always wanted that sense of being with the gang yeah and that you know that they, they were supposed to be the storytellers they were the kind of privileged ones they were in charge yeah and i wanted it to feel like that but actually yeah. it wasn't the, the camera wasn't looking at them as a sort of um i didn't want to kind of uh i didn't want to sort of any sort of patronizing lens on them i just mm -hmm. wanted a I wanted everyone to feel the energy they were feeling you yeah. know well they just take you around they go yeah. with you yeah yeah um oh we've just had we've just had a question in somebody has asked us um what's going to happen next with the project Ooh. I don't know whether you can talk about this I know but I don't know if you can talk about it um sure well, I, I am developing, um, I'm developing the concept for TV, um, which will probably take a while in its early days. But my plan is to, um, is to develop it for TV and to have um, a, um, a series that visits different communities in the four corners of the country. So you have sort of one episode in Wales, one episode in England, one episode in Scotland, one episode in Northern Ireland. And the same premise of having children reinvent according to what makes sense to them and according to what they know, ancient stories. Mm. Um, and to have that kind of mix of fantasy and fact where you're observing, you have a portrait of their real lives, but you're also stepping into their imaginations. And you're seeing how the themes in the story are at play in their real lives as well. Mm. And that's, that's the plan. But, so mm. early days, yeah. but that's the plan. All fingers crossed for that, because okay. I need that show in my life Mine so too. much. Oh, thanks. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed for that. Um, we've only got a minute, not even. Um, oh. But I really like asking at the end of these um, about the sort of legacy of the project. Um, there's obviously a legacy for the boys and the inspiration that they've had, but what's the legacy for you? What have you taken away from it? Wow. Um, what have I taken? I think, I mean, I've learned so much. It's unreal. Um, I think I've sort of just solidified solidified my confidence a bit when working in a sort of fact meets fiction kind of world mm. I think it I think it works I think I, I want to get better I want to get better I want to learn more I want to keep keep working at it um and I'm also aware of where my sort of blind spots might be and the kind of sort of collaborators and the kind of influences I think I want and that I think I need. Mm. 
it's all about sort of you know identifying where your tribe is isn't it and like who are those people who who are those people that are going to um help you do more do better than you could do on your own you know it's it's all about that and there's I was, I was very grateful to all of the people. And I didn't even mention any of the film crew. I just talked about the theatre crew. But well, that's my fault. Crew, there's also a film crew. <laughs> um, so Sarah uh, Smither, who's the DP, who's just, I knew, was going to be um, the perfect collaborator. And she was. Alex Hud on sound. Um, we had a couple of great cameramen as well with us for the show. And well, for one or two shots uh, for the doc. Um, Alice Whittemore, producer. Katerina Oliveira, who worked with me on the edit, um, Natalia Yeager on the grade. Relatively speaking, a smaller crew for yeah. the film than for the show, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all of that, it just, I suppose, just really reinforced to me how important um, a team is. Yeah. Um, and yeah you know teaches you sort of also for a project that size there are always going to be things that don't go right and yeah. things that sort of make you cringe a bit to think of them but um you've also just got to learn to live with those things because if you don't you'll never make anything ever again yeah totally and so it's just a sort of a hardening like you sort of yeah I feel like you you learn a kind of maturity your maturity grows as you go right like yeah the more you make the more yeah I mean it probably it's always quite a raw experience yeah yeah but um but no I think it's true you gather you gather your tribe and they take the edge off it for you and then the more you make I think you just get, yeah, you just get tough to the reality that you're not going to like everything that you make and you're going to make mistakes every time. People are going to see them and that's part of it. Um, And you just have to suck it up, really. Um, Keep cracking on. Well, that is our time. Thank you very, very much for spending the time talking about Camelot. Um, I'm going to be here um, at eight tomorrow night with the team behind Sucker Punch. Um, so if you haven't seen it, please do look it up. Um, but yeah, thank you, Alison. Thanks, and um, See you again. Okay, bye. thanks. Bye.